Sunshine Tunes Austerlitz from the 1982 album. Um, uh, this is the. I restarted this um, film in the setup because I'm quite perplexed by the game, but also quite intrigued. Um, complexity amounts from uh, partly from rules ambiguities, but also the the way the game. Uh, plays because, uh, for example, um, you have a, a river or torrents in the rules translation, so some kind of water barrier here, which um, uh, will eliminate a unit that retreats across it. Now, retreats are quite a heavy feature of the combat results table. You have more retreats than uh, eliminations, which are quite rare. Um, so uh, and likewise, if a uh, unit retreats off the board edge, then they are eliminated, eliminated from the game and they count against victory points. Victory is won upon uh, uh, points um, destroyed. Units destroyed. Um, so the French set up, they have the set up within this red line on this side. Um, you can get a retreat result of five points of retreat. Also, a unit could be attacked twice in the same turn, so it might retreat once, maybe three spaces, and then another three. So you can see that if, if the um, French decide just to say hold this river line, which seems a natural barrier, then uh, they, they might get quite easily eliminated off the board. On the other hand, if they go on the other side of it, they can get eliminated very easily. Um, being retreated into the river. Uh, so there, uh, this is uh, so the option there is tricky because they could go, go forward to meet their attackers, and that's I, I started this game uh, a day or so ago and uh, scrapped it to redo it for the video because that's what I had them do, and uh, I don't know some I just made a, a hot, complete hash the whole thing decided I'd be better off starting again. Then the other thing that is perplexing me is, is to do with the formations. Now units gain strength, at least infantry units gain strength when in lines, but also in columns as well. Um, however, the, uh, the Russians and the Austrians, they cannot retain formation when they cross a natural barrier like a, a ridge line or elevation line or a river line like that. So as these um, fellows move forward and move off the elevation there, they are not going to be able to attack with the benefit of their formation. They'll have to wait for the next turn for it. So you can see there's quite a narrow gap here in it for them to reform. Um, and yeah, I, I basically I'm a bit perplexed about how to play the game each side because um, the Russians and the Austrians have a problem with uh, the, um, the great big plateaus of, of a hill here with the Prats and Heights, not, and, and then immediately meeting rivers. So they're having problems with that. And then the um, French, at least on this side on, of, the, of the whole battle, French are having problems with um, their retreat options. So um, I kind of perplex I was perplexed and I decided to made a complete hash of the game prior to this. So I just start again. So I'm, I'm intrigued at how to play this game. I think basically I, 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 so far I've summed this game up as, as a very interesting game of a historical situation. It's not in any way a simulation, although it, 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 it gives you the flavour of thing with the formations and uh, you need to have combined arms attacks. So you need to attack with artillery first, break up a formation so it's weaker, send in your infantry line against them and then send your cavalry after any routing or retreating units. Um, but it, it, I said it, in one of the other videos I think that I scrapped, but it feels a bit sort of chess-like in that sense. You've got 
three kinds of units. You've got your kings, there's Napoleon here, and over there is Kutasov, or at least the uh, army headquarters of the Allied side. If you capture that, it's game over, otherwise it's won on points, the enemy defeated. Uh, and it feels like kind of like a three-dimensional game of chess, or a game of chess with terrain, so you have to work out how to manoeuvre your pieces with their particular moves and abilities also over the terrain. It's, it's interesting. Um, okay, so this is the setup I've done. I had to um, re sort of think about the rules because you see uh, Here's um, the core or the commands, and uh, this is um, segments they can set up in. The board is marked off. Where are they? Here, okay, into segments. So you've got 15, 16, 21, 22. So 22 goes all the way over to the next 22, and then to here. So that's 22 segment. Then You've got the uh, 16 segment here, and so forth. So um, these are the segments that the um, units can set up in. But initially, of course, I read 14-20 as anywhere between 14 to 20, which essentially meant that Bernadotte could set up the 20s here, and 14 is oh, and 14 is up in this row. Um, 14, 15, 16, 17. You see, 16, 17 feature inside the French line, so essentially Bernadotte could have set up anywhere, um, pretty much within the French zone. Um, and likewise, you had a uh, similar wide ranging abilities or set up with the Allies. But then the uh, reading again here, where there's only three sections with a dash in between. So I take it now that the dash just separates them. It doesn't mean from and to. And uh, that dot just means he has to have at least two units in that area. So Sue is set up. It's like the historical kind of thing. He's supposed to be setting up, set up around here with at least two units in this sector and the rest of his fellows up to here. So that's Sue's area. And uh, and so that then rereading again I realised that what this means is that um, on the French side essentially Bernadotte can either set up in 14 or 20. So he can be there or there. And uh, what other options? And he's the only sort of he's the only option on the French side. So these are the reserve. You've got reserve cavalry, and uh, there's a couple of reserve infantry units there. And that's horse artillery. Um, so I set the French up with them facing towards Sue's uh, corps, as though to to the um, Allied forces, they would be supporting that otherwise weak looking sector. Um, that, 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 then the rest of the main French forces are massed here. You've got uh, Bessieries there with um, cavalry, infantry, light infantry, and horse artillery lined up there. Then we've got, I've got Bernadotte here, so he's got an infantry line here. Cavalry there with light infantry at the front. He's um, a reserve for lands. Set up here. Uh, he's got his light infantry uh, to guard his flank here by, I guess, taking that village there or town. And we've got um, reserve artillery here. And he had a small area in which it could set up because uh, most of its area was cut out by right, so the French set up. Um, got some reserve cavalry there, got some reserve cavalry there. Got Napoleon sitting here. Um, so 
voices, got light infantry here, they're stronger than on their own than the regular infantry. A line of infantry here. Um, you can have infantry in a line even if one's in a city, as they call it, or this is a fortress, a castle. Um, but you can potentially have two infantry in any city house, uh, which obviously, uh, well, they add their strength together and they add two points for the city house. Um, and we've got Sue's main line here, this little artillery on the flank there. And he's got um, some dragoons, some cavalry, and some light in reserve. And then finally we have Daru, is, uh, his cause waiting here at full random turn entry. 50% chance of him entering on turn 1 and then 100% entering on turn 4, so grading up turns 2 and 3 to come back. So that's the French setup. And I've decided to go pretty much for the historical plan. Um, so Sue's is meant to hold the, the right and uh, the main force will be wheeling around and attacking on the left flank. So in reality these uh, reserve cavalry are going to whiz around and um, support that attack. But with this game you do not really want um, uh, units retreating to other units. There's no stacking except for artillery on top of infantry and like I said maybe two infantry in a city if you wish. Because uh, if a unit retreats through you, through another unit, the other unit becomes disorganized plus if on a retreat of four spaces or more you reduce and if you retreat through a unit you reduce that unit as well. So the reserve are out of the way for a while. Um, okay, so now the options for the Allies, the, for their reserve, they've got Austrian Cavalry Reserve and the uh, um, uh, Russian Cavalry Reserve. Could it either be an 8, as I read it, which is this, eights this sector, so effectively it's just that area within the Russian setup. Um, ability. So the Russian cavalry reserve could be there or here, 12. So that's them. What they've got is um, one light infantry unit, uh, some horse artillery, two dragoons. Now they can combine and act as an infantry unit or work separately as cavalry, heavy cavalry. Uh, Russian and Austrian regular cavalry. Um, so I, I've set them up there for the historical um, Allied attack on this wing. Uh, then what else do we have? So we have uh, Gokturov's command here. Um, he ha he could have set up here in twelve. He could have set up here in 12 or here in 18, so basically he had to be in this area. So he's going to spearhead um, the attack down past the pond here. So he's only got a narrow frontage which won't give him great strength for his formation. So he's got his uh, light infantry ready to sort of whiz around there and to sort of exploit attacks from here. Um, then we've got Langeron, who's uh, got a strong line here, and uh, light infantry on either flank. No artillery, no cavalry. Um, Prezuski um, has to set up here. He's got some artillery, um, but obviously he's behind these guys. He sets up in 18, which is... Uh, no. So 18 is, oh, let me just check, no he sets up in 11, so he's in this sector. Um, I hope those two guys aren't here, they shouldn't be there, and then I'll check that. Um, okay, so he's got 
No, I think they, they were dark to us reserves. So yeah, he's got a column there, some light infantry there. Then uh, going over onto the Prats and Heights, we have some Austrians here under cholera. Artillery, some heavier artillery there, they get put on, on their guy rock, light infantry on his flank. So they're ready to move um, on this side of this Prats and stream. And uh, so the, the idea is that these guys will break through. This will come in at, at this kind of like the L there here. Um, so to, to soak off any reinforcements that might try join them. Um, and likewise, these guys under Noradovich, uh, got some artillery there, light infantry, but just three infantry, there's two and three under there. So they'll come down on this side of the Prats and stream. Oh, it's the elder there. Um, then uh, could sort back there. At army headquarters. Uh, this is Constantine. This is the Imperial Guard. You might be able to see his little crown on each of them. So there's a another there's a light infantry unit there. So they, these are stronger than all the other units. The cavalry and heavy cavalry. So that they're essentially I sort of kind of think of them as a reserve to try and punch through any gaps um, on the flank of this mass as they move forward. Um, then we've got uh, who's that? Lichtenstein has it set up in two, so that's his area. Um, what's he got? He's all cavalry and, and some artillery. So he's got mixed um, command of Austrians and Russians. And then finally, Bagration here. He's got three infantry under there, so heavy artillery, artillery, heavy cavalry, regular cavalry, and some dragoons back there. Then there's light infantry. They may sort of come around here, light infantry and dragoons might come around here, I don't know, cavalry might come around here. But you see the cavalry cannot charge over the stream, so this will be a butte area for cavalry charge, charges, but elsewhere it's going to be tricky, because cavalry gain up to plus four points for each square that they charge takes them. So they want the distance to travel to exploit that. Okay, so that is set up. Um, and I'll go. This will go get down to playing again. Okay, now these are the um, disorder and smoke coming fire marches. Okay. So we mark off, um, we start a new game here, we mark off first turn Austrians, and Austrian Russian force, um, 8 a.m. turn 1. So you see we have uh, artillery add 3 to their range because of fog on the first turn, and cavalry uh, I think they reduce two on their die roll or something like that for charges in the fog in this turn. So normally I turn it all fine first, but um, at the range of six plus three is the maximum range of nine. Um, I tell you only going to score a one of square treat on a 12 so it's not going to be worth it in the fog at this range so let's have a general advance here now um there's no opportunity fire from artillery neither opportunity charges from cavalry except if a ca another cavalry unit charges past it and it which it can counter charge and all that does is it would counter as having charged and then uh, um Reduce the cavalry charge, the counter charges by half. 
so infantry can opportunity fire um, in any of the hexes direct any square directly in front of them if a unit moves through it or a unit enters it and does not fight it. So um, um, rules aren't absolutely clear of how you would if infantry can move with guns. It just says if a gun moves under an infantry, I'm putting them on top because it's clearer for me to see. One, two. Five. Okay, so he's coming forward. Um, one. Now, uh, normally a unit has to turn for one movement point, but light infantry don't. So one, two, three, four, five. You see, you have to skillfully use the squares because these squares or polygons have um, eight possible movements into it. But these, I'm not explaining that well, am I? If you're here, uh, no, I'm speaking rubbish. Okay, I think there's something there, but I've lost it. And I'll come back to it. So, okay, then. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he's got a nice line there. He's using his light infantry as regulars. So that's fair enough for the moment. Now, commands don't move after everything else has moved and fought, which is interesting because his command range is three. So one, two, three. But he should be there. I just put him here for clarity's sake. So he cannot... His movement is nine, but he cannot affect any combat there this turn. Okay, so one. Now you see this will have to be careful. One. Two, three, four. I'll leave him there or else he's gonna block. This fellow's because he could move through him, but he would disrupt him. Actually, it doesn't matter. Five for this turn. One, two, three, four, five. You see, this could be dodgy. If they move forwards and they have to retreat, then these guys are going to get disrupted. Two disruptions and you are eliminated. One, two, three, four, five. But he's got to bring his forces up somehow. Um, the cavalry, I think, would step over one, two, three, four. So, uh, artillery, one, two, three, four. He's light infantry, so he can go on top. Um, okay, so one, two, three, four. So you get the picture, I'll do some more movement and then we'll come back. Okay, um, so general events plus action plus general line. Um, seeing as the only real factor of difference of, in, difference in setup is whether the reserve cover is set up here or here, um, is, uh, the French decision is is basically set. So my decision was just um, what does Sue do? Does he, does he try and hold? Um, or, or is he going to do a fight and withdraw? And initially I thought that would probably be what he do, tries to do is do a fight and withdraw down to here effectively guard this flank of the main French attack. Um, he's actually got Davu coming soon. He's not coming in this turn. Um, Sue's has the f full force of the potential allied attack here. Um, so that's it's looking pretty strong. He's going to try, try and sort of wheel around. Don't know how that's going to work. Um, but uh,
to buy some ties tenting because he's got artillery. Uh, uh, uh. Um, because potentially, if, if this artillery fires causes that unit to retreat, then uh, these fellows, this uh, formation will be stronger than this formation. We can potentially make those that formation break up, which could disrupt and one forward here. Um, now, Sue's command range is enough such that um, we can keep them and them in command. We forgot to move the uh, Austrian commands up, but he'll be up here. So his uh, commands will balance each other out. No, Sue's just a bit stronger, so the French will have one point added on. Let's see how it goes. They're going to give a heroic counter-attack. Because um, it is a, it's a big decision, because once the artillery is fired, they can't move. Uh, if that fires, otherwise they would fall back straight away. I think it's going to fire, and uh, so either they'll stay there to defend, or if that if he retreats they'll move forward for the attack. So um a range ah, because we've got Fox still there, haven't we? So a range of two plus three for the fog means um to five. Uh, we need a eight or more for a retreat. Dice. They're not going to fall back straight away. Six? No. Okay. So um, that line's going to. Oh yeah, but this is the thing. It, if this line goes into attack and they retreat straight into the. So what we can do is form a column, so then these will still have the protection of the formation. You know, I'm supposed to do all the artillery fires first, so let's just move up the leaders. So he's got a movement of nine, but command span of three, so one, two, three, so he needs to be there. He's got the command range of three as well. Nine. He's got a command range of two. The same as he. Constantine the guards leader has a command range of one only. He's coming up. Just has to have one part of the formation within range. We can only add that bonus to formations, not to loan units. This is just to remind me that there's a city under there, so um, the infantry gain strength from the city and the artillery have all round fire instead of the standard firing arc, but they are reduced by one point on their die roll for that. Um, so let's have a look at him up and him up. And then this is a big decision. Because um, good subs should, I guess, try to balance out Napoleon. If anyone can balance out Napoleon's 12 uh, combat points, then point, the thing is, is that Kutsov moves really slowly. Uh, so does he go over here? Is he defend against the attack or support his attack on the flank? does remain indecisive and <laughs> saunter up the middle. Well, he's got to move forward. Four, four movement points. One, two, three, four. That's it for now. Um, any more artillery to fire? There's nothing here. Um, uh, these could potentially fire, or do I want them to move? Now this one's 
saturated. Okay, that will fire. So one, two, three, four, five, plus three is eight. So you need an eleven. Oh, look at that! <laughs> well, that's the retreat one. So the opponent chooses direction of retreat and the facing of the units end up at. Right. Oh, and the because units can't normally be stacked, they separate that. Which is that? Which is that? These fellows really they they need to move forward to support this attack. They need to be moving that way. 